Welcome back to Glanny Gores. Let's kick things off by taking a look at the Junior Road Tax pre-final. It'll be Gustav Uzzikov and Stephen Duncan on the front row from Dan Ginchard and Colin Leishman, Scott Lapsley and Cahal Clark fresh from his European activities, Joe Garraway and Cruz Speakman from Gabe Fairbrother and Nathan Smith. Further back, Lucas Jecks and Henry Beaumont, then Alex Duncan and Harry Pullen, and a fabulous field of drivers all the way down to Sam Ardolino in 27th place. This is going to be a good one. Here we go, through to the first corner and up the hill already. It's a great start out front for Stephen Duncan. He gets the whole shot as they head up towards the spoon for the first time. And already a big lunge forward as Dan Ginshard gets into second position. He's not going to be waiting around for long as the 49 runs into second position. And there goes the 69 car. That's Cruz Speakman. What a start for him in third. Stephen Duncan, the leader, Dan Genshaw there in second. Um, that's the first time all season, Jake, we've seen him in second. This is the first pre-final we filmed, of course. He had a problem in an earlier heat. I think he finished, he finished in the top ten, but it had a bit of an issue. And that's put him on uh, P4 for this pre-final, of course, where you finish this pre-final. And he's won all of the pre-finals and finals this season. Where you finish this pre-final is where you start the final coming up in the next part of this programme. Well, he's not going to be hanging around, is he? He's already right on the tail of Stephen Duncan going for the lead. That did not take long at all as Dan Ginshard takes the lead of the race on the second lap around the Argenti Motorsport wonder kid. And he is absolutely on it. But third position, Cruz Speakman is already starting to get close to Stephen Duncan as well. Then you've got Lapsley, Fairbrother, Leishman, Uzukov, Cahal Clark, Joe Garraway, Beaumont and the new recruit at Argenti Motorsport, Sophie Kinghorn. Doing a great job there in 11th position, the Argenti new girl doing a sensational job trying to knock on the door of the top 10 already. There she is, hustling in behind the 89 of Gustav Uzukov. And don't forget that Uzukov was on pole position. So already the deck is well and truly shuffled. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happened to Gustav there at the start. He got uh, deposed up the straight on the first lap, first tour round. And he's obviously ended up Ooh. down in ninth place at the moment. Big move from Leishman. That was a last minute decision there to go on the inside line of Scott Lapsley. But he saw a gap big enough to put his red speed in. And he's managed to get the chassis on the inside line at the spoon. And now as they climb up the hill and then go down the drop towards Devil's Elbow. This is a great little tussle once again. As up into position, Connor Leishman has now got himself to P5. Lapsley and Cahal Clark is there on the Sodi cart. He really has become part of the French Bay Chassis family this season. Did a great job out in the FIA Karting European Championship this season as a novice in the FIA world. And now he is finishing his season in Britain because it's going to be a long, long time until the World Championships in Brazil in December. So he's obviously got to keep himself match fit. Where better to do that than in the Ultimate Karting Championship? You can see there, the, as they come down uh, what we call Damon Hill, the uh, elevation change at this circuit from the dummy grid right at the bottom of the circuit as they go through uh, across the finish line is 24 feet from the bottom of the circuit to the top of the circuit. This is the battle for eight. And further up, Gabe Fairbrothers just popped into third place. Number three is now P3. There he is. He's got through into third position ahead of Cruz Speakman. Then it's Leishman, Lapsley, Clark, Garraway, Uzakov, Kinghorn, Beaumont and Max Taylor. Shane Collins and Harry Pullen going well just inside the top 15 as well. And this is a very convincing run. Not as dominant as it might have been for Dan Ginshard, though. He's struggling at the moment to pull away. Oh, contact! That was always going to happen between Garraway and Uzakov. And Gustav Uzakov's pole position, well and truly ancient history now. Let's watch again. He's on the inside line. He's made a very late decision to go for the overtake. And the two wheels just locked there. Bang! Nothing can be done. Well, they were side by side, weren't they? And Gustav's... I don't know. You've got to give the room to the driver on the inside. Normally, the driver doing the overtaking has got to do it cleanly. He did that, certainly, no doubt. And they were side by side, wheel to wheel. But if you're going to just keep squeezing the guy on the inside, that's that's what's going to happen every single time. And unfortunately, the pair of them have come off badly. Yeah, two drivers go for the same bit of racetrack. They're not going to concede if they don't have to. And sadly, that is motorsport. There's King Horn. That accident earlier on has now put her up into eighth position, chasing down Lapsley and Clark. We're watching Dylan Mackay as he races with Andrew Hughes. Good little battle here as they continue to try and work their way towards the top 10. Aidan Seaton is trying to get into that top 10 as well. It's so difficult to overtake on this kind of Gorse Park circuit. It's tight and twisty. It's a proper old school circuit, this. It's why we love it in the heart of the Welsh countryside. 
but it's very difficult to get an overtaking move on, especially when the driver in front doesn't want to give you any room to play. Gabe Fairbrother chasing down Stephen Duncan, but Duncan is not going to be the kind of man who will give Fairbrother any space. He's going to make him work for this overtaking move if he's going to get a chance, and, and he might not. And this is all playing into Dan Ginchar's hands, isn't it, Jake? You can see now he's, now normal service has been resumed. Yes, indeed. Daniel Ginchar with a comfortable lead. We've seen him winning by extraordinary margins this season, not been beaten in any pre-final or final. I think he started all the pre-finals. I, I think he started all the pre-finals poll. He may not, but he certainly won them all. Um, started on P4 this time after the earlier problems Ooh. in an earlier heat. Big lunch from Harry Pullen on the inside line. He felt he had the space, and now Cahal Clark is going to try and make his bid on Lapsley. That's how you get that overtaking move done. You set it up nice and early into the apex. It obviously tightens as you go in through the right-hander, but you've got to set up the move a few cart lengths back. He zips it up the inside line, nails it on the brakes. Perfect, controlled, disciplined. And it's partly because Scott Lapsley is playing ball. He's not, he's not just driving a tight line into the spoon yeah, and, he's uh, and just not allowing people to come up the inside. He's just saying the normal racing line, that's the fastest uh, that racing line he took. But unfortunately, you do give up the inside line and Cahal Clark there's taken advantage. And Sophie Kinghorn has now seen that as an invitation. She's closing up on the number 30. Now on the inside, Fairbrother does the move on Stephen Duncan. Duncan's going to need to find a response. And pretty quickly, Fairbrother gestures to Stephen Duncan. Come on, let's go after Dan Ginshot together. But that is racing driver code for, right, that's the distance I'm going to pull on you, mate. No chance you're going to get back into this. Yeah, it's it's a standard uh, piece of uh, karting uh, work by it? the drivers, isn't it? As soon as you get past, you give a little push signal. Push me along. Let's try and catch the guy in front. Um, oh. rather, rather than I don't want to be behind you, Me I'd rather be in front of you. Mechanical problem. I think that might be Andrew Hughes. So Andrew Hughes, or whether it's a mechanical problem or an accident, we don't know. But certainly uh, Andrew Hughes and Max Taylor are now out of this race. And one of those two is down at the final bend. So I don't know whether there was an incident we didn't see, but certainly two drivers out, Taylor and Hughes, and that ends their pre-final rather abruptly. So they're going to have a lot of work to do in the final. Dan Ginchard, potentially, this is the battle for fourth we're looking at here. Ginchard out front, Jake. If you remember back in the day, you won't remember back in the day, Ooh. as Leishman makes the move, now P4, That's a nice move. one to do as well. Yeah, nice move there by Connor Leishman, up to uh, the top four and heading this little group now, five of the minute. Um, you might not remember back in the day, Paul DiResta, one season, won every single final. Oh, a little bit of contact, got away with it, no damage done. He won every final during the season, apart from the final at the, uh, in the very last round, he finished second. Ginchard can go one better this year. Will he be able to do it? This is round four, still a couple of rounds after this but um, it would be a massive feat if he could in quite a big field. Indeed, when you look at how tight and competitive the world of British kart racing really is to go 1-0 for the entire season would just be absolutely astonishing in any karting championship. It is almost impossible to go for a clean sweep of pre-finals and finals because there's just so many variables. The battle is so close in British karting. It is the tightest, most competitive, most even motorsport that you can possibly find. Sophie Kinghorn on the brow, up the hill. Clark is going to get on the inside before they even reach the breaking zone for Spoon. That is such a tough move to pull off. And Cahal Clark gets it done on Cruz Speakman. Watch for Kinghorn now. She's going to try and get the move into Damon Hill. She has to hang back. But what a move that was from Cahal Clark. You are so fast through that flat out right sweep. It is such a difficult move to pull off. Now Kinghorn's going to get her chance, but she can't get it done there. What a move, though, from Cahal Clark. That took some bravery. It did. Dropping down through Devil's Elbow, left-handed now, down to the final turn. This is an opportunity, but only if someone gives you the opportunity. And Kinghorn here is all over the back of the carts in front. She didn't have the best uh, starting position, Jake, but she's oh. looking like she's moving up. And Aaron. that is Aaron Mackay yeah. off in the background. Just washes away in the final turn. So easy when you just catch the curb on the inside line. All it takes is just one little touch of paint on that car. Oh, it looks like he was assisted. So that wasn't a spin on his own by the look of it. Maybe Nathan Smith, as he was getting on the inside line, maybe just gave him a little love tap. Maybe. We couldn't see it. So um, we can't say for sure there was any contact. But certainly Aaron Mackay has come off worse. Again, down to the final turn. This is back in a second. That's uh, Ginchard. And then Fairbrother and Duncan. We've got Leishman coming next. Then Cahal Clark, it should be. 
followed by Speakman, Kinghorn, Lapsley, Beaumont, and then Collins going through the line in the 10th uh, position. So they are the top 10. So Kinghorn now back up to 7th place, but looking for something better. So Ginchard has pulled 2.2 seconds clear of Fairbrother and Duncan, and then that tussle for 4th position continues. Connor Leishman trying to stretch out in front of Cahal Clark. Bruce Speakman and Sophie Kinghorn, who is making a great debut for Argenti Motorsport. It's always difficult mid-season when you change teams because you're used to one environment, you're used to one comfort zone, then you have to adapt and change everything. You're meeting new people, you're working with new mechanics, and it's always difficult to get up to speed very quickly. As we go into the last lap, she's got a good chance here of a top six finish. She's already got Cruz Speakman, in fact, so it's going to be two Argenti carts in the top six, one at the front, one in top six. A great debut for Sophie Kinghorn, but Dan Ginshard once again in a class of his own. Absolutely. The one thing uh, Sophie never mentioned, she did mention when I spoke to her, was the fact that she's moved from Canon Motorsport to Argenti after Argenti uh, sort of, if you like, made the invitation and she's, she's taken it up. Uh, but what she didn't say in the interview, but she did say to me, was that she was very grateful for the work that Canon Motorsport did. Well, it's all good development for this man. He doesn't need any development. Ginshard takes the flag. Fairbrother in second from Stephen Duncan. And fourth place is going to be Connor Leishman in front of Cahal Clark and Sophie Kingman. What a top six. Someone's not happy. Scott Lapsley gesturing as he comes across the line. But a victory for Dan Ginchard at a canter. 2.4 he stretches out over there, brother and Duncan. Leishman in P4 from Cahal Clark with some great overtakes. Sophie Kinghorn with great aggression and controlled style. Cruz Speakman, Henry Beaumont, Shane Collins and Scott Lapsley making it a very competitive top 10. It's going to be a gripping final, whatever happens. See you after the break.